What's up everyone? How's it going? Somebody, as y'all start joining in, let me know if the audio is good and if y'all can hear me okay. I'm going to try to get this set up so that I can read all the questions as they start filtering through. What's up? There we go. There goes the stuff. Uh, can y'all hear me? All right, cool. Sound is good. So, uh, I'm going to be staring at my computer screen because the questions stay up there a lot longer than they do on my phone, so don't mind the back of my head as I start uh, turning away. It's just that I can uh, read these questions a lot longer. All right, so uh, yeah, it's been a long time since uh, I've done a video, at least for me. Uh, I know that I had some uh, in the queue uh, ready and scheduled to go. Uh, while I was on vacation and I just got back today, uh, actually tonight. So I figured that I would uh, do an unboxing for some of the gear that I have, answer some questions that y'all may have, and just let y'all know uh, what it is that's lined up for this coming week. Uh, I'm going to get back on the saddle and get out there, start trying to chase some fish down, and uh, we'll uh, see if I can get right back on them. So uh, vacation was good. Uh, before I get into everything, I hope that each and every one of y'all had a happy Thanksgiving. I know that I thoroughly enjoyed mine with my family. Uh, we took a week off away from home and uh, finally back, so it feels good to be here. And uh, it's awesome whenever you come home and you've got some packages waiting on you. So one of them is going to be for y'all. I will be doing a giveaway. One of the uh, companies that had emailed me uh, decided to send me an item and I told him the only way that I would do the uh, video review on my YouTube channel is if they would send me an extra item so that I could give away to you all after I was done with the review. So uh, that's always a plus. Uh, and because of y'all, the, uh, the subscriber count that I have, uh, they are now approaching me. I mean, I've had quite a few companies do it, but now I can kind of be selective and use my subscriber count to uh, leverage some items for you all to be able to benefit from. So looking forward to uh, doing a lot more of these so that I can give stuff away to each and every one of y'all at no cost to me. So that's a, a big plus in my book. Um, let's see. <clears throat> I'll start taking some of the questions. I'm gonna go back through here and see what we've got. Panama, Inshore Yacker TV, what's up? What's going on, brother? Uh, Panama, question mark, I'm not too sure what that means. Inshore, Los Buzos, yeah, I've been there before. Hopefully uh, you're saying that because you're gonna get ready to go. It's a great time out there. What's up, Harlingen? Smokey's Universe, how's it going? Juan, how's it going? ASAP Fishing One, 5,000 subs, congrats. Salty Sea Dog uh, in the Pacific Ocean. Vacation in Panama? No, no vacation in Panama. Uh, it was just a family thing. I didn't film any fishing. Uh, it was strictly because I've been fishing really hard and uh, all my time has been consumed with the channel, uh, this was solely family time. I would have loved to have went fishing. I saw some huge freshwater fish where I went and uh, it was cool. What's up, Max? How's it going, brother? Argentina, nice. What's up, Matthew? Living in Panama from Argentina, okay. Uh, I, I took the family to, like, what, it was two years ago before I got off of active duty. 
I uh, we had planned for a family vacation at Disney. It was supposed to be something that uh, as I was getting out of the military and then also with my youngest nephew uh, turning or coming of age to be able to comprehend what was going on uh, at our destination, uh, we decided to, myself and my younger brother, made a trip to uh, Central Florida, to Orlando, to go to Disney World, and uh, it, was a, it was a phenomenal time. So I had a blast, but now that it's over, I'm ready to engage back with some fishing and... Ah, uh, after being gone for like a week straight, no fishing, it's always scary uh, going back out there and not knowing if the fish are going to be there. So trying to constantly stay on them, that's the battle for a full-time fisherman, especially like a YouTuber, because you're going almost every day, every other day until you actually find them. So uh, just got a, a couple of cobwebs that I got to knock off, dust off. Uh, David, uh, you might want to ask that question to Nick. I'm not sure if he's on here. I haven't seen any comments from him, but I do know Nick is going to be, uh, doing that. So you might, if you're on his Patreon, uh, page and, and you are a patron to his channel, uh, definitely hit him up on Patreon and I'm pretty sure he will let you know where it's all going to take place, the time and everything else. You can help with the cobwebs, Texas Fishing Guy 74. Thanks, brother. You want to buy an Outback, Juan Vega. I uh, want to buy an Outback 2019. I'd say do it, man. Awesome. Uh, opinions on the Outback? It's a phenomenal kayak. Uh, it, it is king of, like, in my opinion, all inshore fishing kayaks. Uh, that thing is phenomenal in every way. It is super fast and uh, I've actually grown accustomed to it now that I've been able to go out there quite a few times in that kayak and uh, like standing in it, the power pole now mounted on it, the fish finder. I mean, it's the whole package, dual steering. Everything about that kayak is phenomenal. Uh, the only hiccup, which everybody probably uh, knows by now, is my offshore experience was horrible. I won't be using it for that. I mean, you wouldn't, you shouldn't try to use that kayak for that type of uh, outing. At least for me. I mean, I, I'm starting to, I'm almost middle aged now, and uh, it, th that style of fishing is not for me. I'm not saying that nobody else can't go out there and do that, but uh, for me, it no. Uh, it's my comfort level is way too low in order to uh, do that style of fishing. But in every other regard, that kayak is phenomenal. I say go for it. If you got the funds for it, definitely do it. Uh, more topwater PDL content. It's coming. Uh, and that's because of one of these boxes. So let's do that right now. And I apologize that I can't. I always feel so bad whenever I look back on the video because... I'm not able to answer everybody's questions, but uh, I do have an agenda with these videos. I just dropped a lot of papers, but uh, this was one of them, being able to share with y'all. This package is from Old Town uh, Canoe and Kayaks, and uh, I placed a, I, I did an email to the gentleman who is my, I guess like my contact with Old Town, and uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, they reached out to me, Old Town uh, Johnson Outdoors, who owns Old Town Canoe and Kayak. Uh, they have like, I don't know what you would consider them, but it's like a firm that basically goes possibly, and I'm just speculating right now, but uh, this firm, company, whatever you want to call them, basically sought me out and they sent me an email and the gentleman that I have been talking or corresponding with back and forth, uh, I shot him a question just letting him know that I do want to fish with that uh, PDL and put it through the paces, but the only thing stopping me from doing it was the fact that I don't have a, uh, what do you call it, a power pole mounted to it, which my Outback does have. 
and I also don't have a fish finder for it and I feel kind of bare when I go out there and I don't have eyes underwater. I'm so used to doing that with the Outback and my Lowrance. So Old Town sent me a care package. I'm just uh, dying to see what it is that uh, they decided to send me. So that was one of the things like when I came in and I was like, holy cow, uh, Old Town, they sent me a package. So I'm thinking it's gonna be the fish finder. Let's see what uh, Old Town has done. Oh, wow, check this out. <laughs> Holy smokes. Look at this. Check that out. Now, I'm not a hummingbird person, so um, it's a learning curve that's going to take place with me. Uh, but I will rig this thing up on the old town probably right after this video i'm gonna go out into the garage and rig this thing up for tomorrow's fishing day nick is supposed to come over and we're gonna meet at five in the morning head out and do some fishing but uh, if i can rig this up tonight then i will take the old town uh, out there the topwater pdl and we'll see uh what's gonna happen but man oh man this is I, I tell you what, I'm all smiles right now because I'm pretty sure this unit cost a pretty penny. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be freaking awesome. Gonna have eyes under the water now, so that is awesome. So thank you, Old Town. I really appreciate it. And uh, man, that topwater PDL is going to be deadly. Uh, I so a little bit about the topwater PDL. Um, it it's a great kayak. It is the get up and go. Uh, for those of you that have been with the channel for quite some time, you know that uh, I will take my son's little Hobie Sport out there on very quick trips to like Seabrook, somewhere close to home, maybe my neighborhood ponds and stuff like that, because I can just throw it in the back of the truck without the bed extender. Um, that old town is darn near the same size, but it carries it carries a little, I think it carries more weight, the, your load, the capacity. Uh, it's 450 pounds of gear and fisherman or fisherwoman, uh, angler. So the amount of weight that it carries is just phenomenal in comparison to the little Hobie Sport. Uh, heck, you could even compare it to, as far as the load that it can bear, uh, to the Outback. Um, the Outback is like 400 and some change, and uh, the Topwater PDL is 450. So, I mean, that's crazy. It is way more stable than the Hobie Sport. So, that is now my new go-to get-up-and-go kayak. So, if I do want to take a trip, there's a break in weather from the rain, that kayak, you can just throw it right into the truck uh, and go really quick. And because it was free, uh, I'm not afraid to beat it up. I'm not afraid to drag it around. So the videos that y'all see me do on it, I'm not being nice to the kayak at all. I want to put it through its paces and uh, I, I just got nothing but good things to say about it. It's a great kayak. If you're looking to start kayak fishing, is definitely one to take a look at for sure. And I'm not just saying that because Old Town gave me a free kayak and I look to get more things. I have no partnership or affiliation with Old Town aside of the fact that they trusted in me to do a video on it and I've upheld my end of the bargain and that is it. But because that kayak has surprised me in like so many ways, I feel compelled to do more videos. Y'all want to know about it, so that's what I am gonna do. And now that we've got this thing right here, there will be plenty more videos that will be coming. So uh, again, thank you, Old Town, if you're watching this, which I seriously think that you're not gonna be watching it, but uh, I'm looking forward to getting out there on the water with it. All right, let's go to this other box right here. Um, this is one it came from a company. Let me open up an email really fast. Uh, 
This is, nope, not this one right here. Let's see. There is a company by the name of Uni Gear Shop, and they were looking to send me an item that I basically couldn't uh, pitch to you guys and gals out there, but uh, this one right here I can most definitely do because it's something that's right up our alley. Uh, I do have a dry bag that I go out fishing with, and with that dry bag, uh, it basically carries my drone, but that's all I have room for. Drone and my first aid kit whenever I'm out there on the water to protect it. So uh, when I saw this on their website, I was like, yeah, if you uh, send me two of those, uh, I, I have no issues doing a video for you guys. I'll, I'll definitely test it out. I'll let my audience know about you and your website. And uh, at the same time, they're basically giving you all uh, a shot at getting a free bag. So we'll do a, a gear like giveaway uh, with this item. It's the first time that I'm going to be able to take a look at it. And uh, let's see what we've got here. I do know it's a dry bag. I just don't know what it looks like. Uh, but here we are. There's one for me and then another one to basically give away to you guys. Both the same exact items. So uh, let's see what, what this is going to be. Take her over there, Lauren. All right. Let's get this thing opened up. All right, so what's in the bag? Let's see. Looks like for uh, a cell phone, a mobile phone, that's what this looks like. A waterproof bag for your phone so that's what's going to be going to one of y'all and then this right here I believe is the 40 liter uh, it, its capacity is 40 liters and it's got backpack straps on it so we're gonna definitely put this thing through the paces uh, see how it handles out there and I don't know if I want to trust any of my expensive camera equipment on it. We'll probably try it out with something else because I don't know how the stitching is going to go, but if it impresses me, I'll let y'all know about it. And then towards the middle of the month or somewhere along down the line, uh, we'll do the giveaway for the other one. So I'll do a separate video for that. Actually, you know what? Let's just do that now. If you want to be entered into the giveaway, uh, all you need to do is comment, you know what, yeah, I'm being indeci indecisive right now and knee-jerk reaction. We'll do it in another video, all right? We'll keep these two things separate, uh, but, I mean, it looks legit, pretty cool. It's just basically fold it, and then you snap it. If you're interested in knowing about this company and... Uh, how much these bags cost, I will put that in the description down below so that y'all can definitely check it out. But uh, it's Uni Gear, and they gave me uh, a couple of like hyperlinks that are somehow uh, connected with my channel and my name. So any traffic that clicks on that uh, or any traffic that I generate, We'll, I'll get credit for it, and then it just basically lets them know, okay, yes, I guess. Maybe we got our money's worth out of this guy. Uh, yeah, I, I never heard of them either, but they reached out to me, and being that I can try to give y'all something, uh, I went on ahead and jumped on it. Uh, there's also another company that has a uh, fishing-related item that uh, I asked my patrons about, hey, do y'all think I should do this? Uh, 
the majority of them said yes, so uh, we're definitely going to... I took them up on the offer to get another free item, and then basically I will turn around and give that away back to each and every one of y'all as well. But uh, yeah, here it is. Christmas a little bit early. Uh, two of these dry bags, and uh, that's pretty much all I've got by way of things that I've received since... I have been gone for the past week, uh, so yeah, it feels good to be back, and I cannot wait to get out there on the water. <laughs> yeah, that's my little dog. My brother just came in uh, with my daughter. He was uh, bringing her back from the trip, and we got in a little bit earlier, so I was trying to hurry up and knock out this video let y'all say what's up you know and uh show y'all the gear that we got uh would you who would you who would you recommend buying a rudder from for a kayak that won't break the bank Eesh, i don't know honestly i don't uh more often than not if you're pretty handy then you can just buy like the kits and then do it yourself because no one's gonna do like if you want something done right, you better do it yourself. Uh, if you trust on somebody else to do a job for you, you may find that your kayak has sprung a slow leak or your kayak may have already had a leak, but you didn't notice it before. And now when you do notice it, you're gonna blame the person or company that you sent it to. And uh, th that's just the way I am. If I notice something, I'm like, no, I gave it to you and it was perfectly fine. Uh, I would just recommend doing it yourself. You buy it, you get you get it yourself. But there are companies out there that do do it. And depending on what your area is, look up your specialty kayak shops and uh, just go to, uh, I always do like uh, the reviews on Google and you can pretty much gauge if it's a worthy shop or not. Uh, for a meet and greet, I'm thinking probably like springtime uh, for all my subscribers and uh, I'm not too, I'm, I don't have a warm and fuzzy for winter like time meet and greets. Uh, it's just too many bad things can happen, especially if, you, if I do a meet and greet and someone who just wants to come out and say what's up, Next thing you know, they're going to go fishing. They probably don't have the proper gear and stuff like that. And I would just feel horrible that I was probably uh, a, a small percentage of the cause of them going out and possibly getting hurt or something like that. But springtime, more than likely, I don't know. We'll just we'll play it by ear and, and we'll see when the next meet and greet is going to be. Uh, Robert DeLeon27, I need your decals. Can you give contact info? Brother, uh, if you're interested in something like that, all you need to do is just contact me through Instagram or just like this right now. You just send me your email address and I you let me know what it is that you want. Uh, all that information is in the video descriptions or the, yeah, in every description of my videos. Uh, it tells you how to, uh, like what I'm selling. And right now, just for the channel, all it is is vinyls and decals. Um, you send me an email, a message, uh, and I will shoot you over a PayPal message that, or it's an invoice, and then you can just pay it through PayPal. That's the only thing that I've got right now. Uh, hopefully this next coming year in 2019, I'll be able to expand to like maybe t-shirts and stuff like that to be able to uh, just put some type of merchandise and gear out there for some of you hardcore subscribers. And, and I love each and every one of y'all for it because uh, it basically, like my way of thinking and just to be open with each and every one of y'all is that uh, the sale of these decals, the little stickers, the, the four inch ones, and then my vinyls, uh, and then soon to be t-shirts, it helps to publicize the channel. It helps to promote me. Uh, if it triggers one person to say, hey, what is that that you have on your kayak or on your truck or whatever the case, the t-shirt that you're wearing, 
uh, that helps me to like expand my audience. So if I can just spark the interest of one person because some of you like the channel and you enjoy it enough uh, by wearing my gear uh, or displaying it on your kayak or your vehicle or wherever it is that you want to display it, it helps me out. Uh, I don't look to get rich off of any of that stuff and trust me, it is a nightmare trying to keep up with the sale of those uh, decals and vinyls right now. But I do it because a lot of y'all have asked for some of the stuff and uh, so uh, I basically put myself out there to try to fulfill all these orders and then uh, just basically give y'all uh, a little bit of merchandise to be able to uh, wear out there and, and or display. So uh, I really appreciate it. But yeah, if you get on Instagram and Facebook, then that will be awesome. Where do I fish? You're new to my channel. That's Fishing STX Waters. Uh, I'm inside the Galveston Bay area, and then uh, I also venture out to, uh, sometimes uh, we go to Sabine Pass, and I say we as in uh, me and my fellow fishing YouTuber, my buddy Nick, uh, who is RX Angler, we go to Sabine uh, a lot, Sabine Pass. Um, we also go to, uh, what do you call it, Port O'Connor, Matagorda, and every once in a while we'll make a trip down to as far as like uh, the, I believe y'all call it the Upper Laguna Madre, uh, the Corpus Christi area, Aransas Pass. And uh, this next coming year, if it's as successful as my 2018 year, my very first year of actually doing YouTube full time as a fisherman, if I continue to have the same success, I want to start trying to take like we're going to start like quarterly where I will do a trip uh, out of the state or possibly in the state. And I just have a lot of uh, things that I want to accomplish with the 2019 year. And uh, 2018 was very successful. It was scary because I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know how I was going to feed my family. But uh, somehow things just worked out. And, you know, I took that leap of faith and it worked. So, uh God willing, uh, I will keep my fingers crossed that I have another successful year and I owe it to each and every one of y'all and I owe it to my patrons. So everybody that has been a patron at some point in time or another, I thank y'all so much from the bottom of my heart because it allows me to, uh, to do what it is that I'm doing. So for 2019, I look to take quarterly trips if uh, I can afford to do more then I most definitely will do that. I'll get out there and hopefully be able to start fishing with uh, subscribers that are not uh, in the area. Uh, I will maybe start doing a giveaway. Some of my patrons have said, you know, uh, voice, hey, um, why don't you think about doing like a, uh, a fishing like tag along giveaway or something like that. So we'll do something uh, to that effect where we'll just uh, pick at random one of you all uh, viewing to to basically I guess win a trip out into the marsh system with me if you're local but if you're not local maybe you can show me your waters I will pay for a plane ticket to fly out wherever you all are and then you just show me the ropes where you're at. If you don't have a kayak, well, I mean, I'm not opposed to bank fishing. I mean, that's how I started as a young guy. And uh, I'll go out there and just enjoy uh, a good one or two days uh, with y'all. But uh, that's on the forecast for 2019. Um, all the logistics will work out as uh, they come. So, I mean, if you guys think that's a great idea, then uh, I hope you all will think that's a great idea, but yeah. Uh, I look forward to doing a lot of traveling. JG Fishing, I was telling my father-in-law about you this weekend. He was a Marine as well. He asked what your rank was when you got out, and I told him you were an E8 Master Sergeant. Uh, I was an E9 Master Gunnery Sergeant. Uh, that was like the last and final rank on the enlisted structure that you can go for the Marine Corps 
I will say technical side. There, there's another E9, which is Sergeant Major, but we're getting into the weeds with that. But uh, yeah, cool, awesome. Let's see, Port Mansfield, what's up, S. Holcomb? Port Mansfield, what do you mean by that? What up, Jeffrey Willis? What up, Osan? Ray, how's it going, brother? Oh, cool. So, Hamatode, uh, that's awesome that you think it's an amazing idea. Uh, you know, I thought about it. I talked to Nick about it a lot. And uh, I think that's a, a good way to just, you know, get on a personal level with some of you uh, guys and gals out there. Oh, awesome, JG Fishing. That's awesome, man. E6. Telling you what, that's nothing to shake a stick at, at least for the Marine Corps side. Uh, whenever you make E6, that's pretty much your maid. You enter the staff ranks, and I've always considered all the sailors that I worked for and that I worked with as I progressed through the ranks. Uh, even though you're not a chief, it doesn't matter. Uh, you, when you bear that rank of E6, uh, in my book, I treat you just like my staff and COs. Awesome, congratulations. Oh, nice. Been watching ever since the Stingray did the flip. That was an experience out there on the jetties. I completely breathtaking. And then after a while, it was like kind of gave me the heebie jeebies because I'm like, man, that thing was massive. <laughs> what if he what if he comes back up and then like hits the uh, the kayak by accident? How do you fish with the spoon nine hundred marine? Uh, you keep getting stuck, then fish it a little bit faster. If you're at the jetties and you're letting it go down, normally I'll just let it, the spoon go down. And uh, I mean, that thing is magic. Whenever you know the fish are biting and, and you want something to basically cast out there and then rip it back through the water, uh, just use a countdown method. Uh, count down like maybe five one thousand and then start reeling it in with a straight retrieve that doesn't work You start twitching it change up your cadence But uh, do all kinds of things and then eventually you're gonna start tagging them fish and uh, be able to bring them in Make sure your hooks are sharp too. And if they bend out your hooks uh, bend them back into place Do I keep a fish journal the salty sea dog? Yes, that is this right here. It is a massive calendar but uh, one of the patrons uh, and I haven't checked the P.O. box since I got back, but one of the patrons was going to help me out with that. This is my journal. Uh, every fishing trip that I take, I write down all the uh, pertinent information uh, about it, the wind, like, so all the weather conditions, and then some of the lures that I used, where I went fishing, and this will allow me to take a peek back in time. Like, so let's fast forward a year from now. I'll be able to look back on the same exact day. Where was I? What was the weather like? So that I can start pattering, uh, pattering them. Um, and yes, so to answer the question in short, yeah, I do keep a journal. It's gonna make you a better fisherman and it doesn't take that much time at all. Just note, hey, this, uh, the biggest fish that I caught and uh, what did I use, the colors, what was the weather like, and then you're gonna be golden. Will you ever attend to do a video about stabilizers? I don't, uh, George, I don't believe in them. Um, I think that if you need to put stabilizers on your kayak, maybe you need to go back out and just get a kayak that is a bit more stable than what you already got. And that's what the, uh, the demo days are for. So if you don't have that warm fuzzy about your kayak, uh, being able to keep you upright in rough conditions, maybe that shouldn't be the kayak for you. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, when you start adding stabilizers and everything to it, one thing, it, it, it's a friction point, which means more drag in the water. It'll probably give you a little bit more confidence and like, okay, yes, it's going to be stable, but uh, I just, I can't stand things hanging off of my kayak that when a redfish is running all the way around me because I don't use a winch style fishing rod and reel. Uh, I like to 
have fun with them and feel their fight, give them a chance to basically snap my line if they're good enough. Um, but if they get hung up in it, then I will curse it and then probably do away with it. A lot of y'all probably saw me using a, uh, a safety flag. Well, the safety flag has bird nested me one too many times, so now you don't see me using it as much. Um, and that's just a like a safety call that I made. I'm like, hey, uh, I'm tired of bird nesting because my line, whenever I sidearm cast, uh, gets hung up in that flag if it's blowing just right. So anything that provides a snag point for my style of fishing, then I basically get rid of it. And that's why I don't use anchor trolleys. I don't use any of the other things. Um, but the stabilizers, yeah, I, I, I just, I don't believe in them. Where am I gonna go fishing tomorrow? Gonna be freezing in the morning. Uh, well, I gotta take a look at everything. Nick has already planned everything out. Uh, he's done the homework. All I gotta do is see what the weather is gonna, like as far as the temperature is gonna be, so that I can dress up uh, like appropriately. But uh, we're gonna head out to, oh, where is it? Uh, we're gonna go to Sabine Pass, I believe. But we've been known to change like the very last minute just based off of how the weather turns out whenever we wake up in the morning, we'll just make a last minute diff effort. effort. But as it stands right now, more than likely Sabine Pass. What's up, Manny? How are you doing? Uh, what's the worst bait caster you ever used? Um, man, that, that's hard to say because every one that I bought, I basically researched and I haven't really used many bait casters. Uh, I can't say that one is really bad. I just think it's normally whenever you have anything go wrong with your equipment, Take a step back, reevaluate what it is that you purchased, and then try to think about like everything that you can possibly do to uh, perfect using it. But to say like there was one that was just absolutely garbage, uh, I, I haven't really reached that point yet. Um, I've never used a bait caster that I didn't like. Uh, now some of them do have like the downfalls, the ones that really don't have many bearings in them. They just don't cast as far, or the drag is glitchy, but can you catch fish with them? Yeah, I think so. I think everything, you know, deserves its due respect uh, as far as the price point. Now, if you pay for something that's super expensive and it just performs like garbage, well then, yeah. Uh, but I haven't had that happen to me. Uh... Mud Lake was stacked with reds. This is from Scott Thompson. Couldn't get slots to strike. Didn't have any bugs at that time. Just uh, swim baits. Good luck. I plan to hit it again. Where was this at again? Mud Lake. I'm going to assume that's Sabine Pass. I'm not too sure. Uh, just ordered the clicker. Seems like a good deal for $30. Can you make a video on your power pole? Is it worth it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's most definitely that power pole to me is, uh, it's worth every penny that I spent on it. And uh, here's a disclaimer. I am a power pole, uh, what do you call it? Promotional staff. Uh, however, I didn't use my power pole promotional staff certificate that they give me to get a discount for that power pole, um, because it, it was basically just like, uh, it wasn't enough. I felt for everything that I'm going to be doing for them and basically putting it out there and, and you all answer, like answering y'all's questions about the power pole, because it just, it appears like every piece of gear that I use uh, some of y'all are inquisitive and, and you want to know, uh, is our things worth it? Are they not worth it? Uh, I think that that power pole is worth it. And I think that 
uh, you all backing me uh, in power poles eyes they're like hey how many people do you have viewing you and I'm going into the weeds now uh, just kind of a little rant I guess that I have because I I feel that I have a lot more to bring to the table than an average tournament fisherman but uh, I want to prove to power pole I thought about like saying, hey, uh, never mind, I don't want to represent power pole, but I'm like, you know what, this could be an opportunity for me to show them what my worth is. Uh, there's no tangible evidence that I can provide to them, but uh, I'm going to stick this out for about a year because that's how long uh, my promotional staffing with them uh, is as far as the time frame. But uh, I used that power pole back in 2013 when they first debuted on Hobie Kayaks. Uh, it was the pro angler that uh, they came on and it was whenever I got to go be a part of the Hobie Fishing Worlds Championship in Australia. We used those power poles out there for the very first time and uh, seeing firsthand, being able to use it and, and see what it was about, uh, I I've always remembered it. But I really didn't need it. Uh, after that uh, Hobie Worlds, I, di I didn't need it because I was doing freshwater fishing and I wasn't in real shallow water. So the minute that I moved back here to the salt last year, I'm like, I I've wasted so many opportunities whenever you're sight casting reds or you're trying to find them. And when you're drifting, uh, using an anchor, excuse me, using an anchor trolley, it's kind of hard because there's so many things that you got to fiddle with to basically stick the stake out uh, pole and then position it just right. Then you got to reach and grab your rod. By that time, you're probably uh, nine times out of ten, you're going to spook the fish. I'm not saying that it can't be done, but you got to be pretty proficient at it. But more often than not, you're going to spook that fish. With a power pole, it's money because when you see the fish, if you don't like uh, goof it all up, like me, a couple of times whenever I was just getting back into using it, uh, I kept hitting the up button and I was like, come on, power pole, why don't you want to go down? Uh, and I just realized that I was hitting the up button so the power pole was just uh, taking the command and I kept drifting and I would spook fish. But uh, now I've got it down where the minute that I see anything that looks like a fish or fishy water that I want to cast on, I just hit that down button and that is it. The power pole goes down, does its thing really quiet. And the minute that I hit it, I'm already reaching for my rod and putting my eyes back on where the fish was so that I can cast on it. But it, most definitely worth it in my book. That power pole is just phenomenal. Uh, paddle, have I ever tried paddleboard fishing? Paddleboard fish, it's pretty similar to kayak fishing. I haven't tried it. Uh, I thought about trying it, but I, I just never tried it. Uh, I, I definitely would only use it for like maybe super calm days and marsh fishing because you're pretty protected by the wind. But I mean, I'm not opposed to doing it. I just, I just never tried it before. I want to start doing videos. What do you recommend as a starter on a budget? And... Uh, what would you recommend or most have on your or must have on your kayak for video recording? Uh, I just I always recommend the same thing. Uh, whatever you can afford, that's what you need to take with you. And as far as doing videos, everybody has a cell phone and uh, just tie some type of a float to it so that uh, if it falls overboard, then you're not gonna have to worry about it. but, uh, just get out there and enjoy yourself. Uh, if you're on a budget, well then, you know, get you. I would say a start, a great starting point is go to Facebook. Uh, what is it called? The Facebook Market or Marketplace, and get you a used kayak. Uh, ask the seller if you can try it out first. Go out there for a couple of hours. If they don't mind, uh, if it's a good kayak, they shouldn't mind you taking it out there for a couple of hours just to make sure there's no leaks and you're not going to regret the uh, the purchase. But a good two to five hundred bucks will get you a great starter kayak. Don't start trying to rig it before you've actually gone onto the water because what works for one uh, angler isn't going to work for another fisherman. So get out there, put some hours. Uh, 
you know, inside the kayak, and then eventually you're gonna learn if you want, if you like it or not, and then you're gonna know exactly where it is that you want some of that gear to be placed. How many batteries, so how many batteries do I take for my cameras per outing? I have eight GoPro batteries, um, and then I have a power bank that has a triple charger on it. So whenever my GoPro batteries start dying, I throw them onto the power bank and it's basically just uh, continuous recording. I've never run out of batteries. Um, so it's more than enough juice to film my outings. Uh, I'm constantly recording. So from the, the time that the fishing trip starts, I, I'm filming and it's continuous. Uh, I film on a five minute loop, so that allows me to be able to catch every bit of footage from the cast to the hook set to the fighting the fish, bringing him in and then releasing it if I plan to release it. And uh, that's the way I film. So you never know what's gonna happen. If I didn't film that way, I never would have been able to get that stingray going uh, airborne behind me. Um, so that's why I film continuously. Uh, how are you able to sight fish in such constant windy conditions? I have been trying to do it, but I'm struggling even though it's not nearly as windy. Uh, it depends on the waters. Uh, you, you, if your waters are very productive, well then you're going to have a good opportunity to make it happen. Um, the marsh, uh, shallow water like grass flats, shallow water flats uh, with a muddy bottom, Anything that is shallow water, you need the water to be shallow in order to sight fish. If you're trying to do it in like maybe a foot of murky water and you can't see the bottom, then chances are you're not going to be able or you won't be successful at doing it. So Port O'Connor is the perfect example. I love sight fishing there because it's very easy. You've got these grass flats and the water for the most part is clear. So uh, you'll be able to sight fish there and uh, the, the, the shallower the water, the easier it's gonna be because you can see their backs, uh, their dorsal fins will be out of the water or their tails will be out of the water. So like when their back is out of the water, you'll hear me say like, hey, I see a crawler or if their tail is out of the water, look, there goes some tails. And then whenever it's just a foot, a full on like feeding frenzy, uh, like a big old school of reds, well, I mean, that's, just like the unicorn in the forest. Whenever you see that, you don't know whether to actually just sit there in awe and watch it or like I better take this opportunity to actually cast. And more often than not, I always want to cast because I want to catch the fish. But if I can refrain from doing that, then I probably would be able to present y'all with like awesome footage of just letting them, you know, do their thing and Maybe one of these days I'll get to the point where it's like, yeah, I'm just going to be able to do that. Have, okay, that was a question. Have you ever flipped your Hobie Outbacks? What precautions do you take to not flip it? Uh, I have, I have only turtled my Hobie Outback and I think it was the 2016 or the 2017 Probably the 2017. I flipped that one once. That was coming back in from uh, Pins. We did an offshore, like a BTB trip, and uh, it was my first time going BTB in a long time. And whenever I was coming back in, uh, I tried to use the Mirage Drive, and the 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 uh, the surf was pretty bad, so I flipped it. Uh, but that was due to my own mistake, not pulling the Mirage Drive and then using the paddle. But that was my own error uh, with that. And then I have flipped a Pro Angler 12, again, to user error. Uh, it was a very windy day up in Fort Worth uh, when I was stationed over there. I was fishing for crappie and then uh, I threw a marker buoy out. And when I was trying to reach for the marker buoy, uh, the, the kayak kept getting blown uh, away from it and I kept reaching and then my center of gravity just basically went too far out from underneath the kayak and then I flipped it. But in both situations, I was able to upright the kayak like instantly. Like I had a Lowrance Elite 4 DSI whenever I flipped the uh, 
the Hobie out, I mean, the, the Hobie Pro Angler 12. And so it got dunked. One of my GoPros, the Hero 3 that I currently have, got dunked. And both of them came back to life. It took the uh, Hero 3 a long time, like maybe three months or so, for it to fully uh, be functional again. And then the uh, Lowrance, that just turned right back on. Uh, but again, the kayak wasn't upside down, uh, but for like maybe 30 seconds at the most, I was able to upright it like really quick. Can we do a quick poll to see what kayak everyone has? Also GoPro 7, Hero, Black, Batteries, Wasabi, GoPro, uh, last one hour each. So my take on the whole GoPro batteries, uh, we can do a poll to see what everybody has, but it's like apples and oranges. Every person does different styles of fishing and you're not gonna find one kayak that's gonna be able to do everything. Can you make it work? Yeah, you know, most definitely you can make your kayak work in any type of situation. You'll just struggle uh, in comparison like me, trying to take my uh, 2019 Outback offshore in very rough conditions. I know it's gonna take on water, that's just nature of the beast. Whenever you take a look underneath the hatch, um, there's these bungee uh, drill downs where there is uh, stainless fasteners going straight through the hole. Hobie skipped out, and this is uh, my personal rant with uh, Hobie and what they did. Uh, they didn't provide plastic anchors the way they did with the previous model Hobies, and I would have to actually do a video to show y'all what I'm talking about. Um, but water is going to get in through that area because they skipped out uh, on the design. If they would have just did the same thing they did with the previous year models, then that, that kayak would be just perfect. Um, but uh, for some reason they didn't. And uh, now uh, that, you know, they, they may start feeling the repercussions of the videos that are out there, all the uh, controversy about the 2019 Outback being inferior in some ways, but to me, it's not. It, it's a great kayak. It was just an oversight on their part, but uh, I mean, I love that kayak, so everything about it is phenomenal, but uh, yeah. Uh, but getting back to uh, the question at hand, uh, one kayak is not going to be the solution to every style of fishing. That's why most diehard kayakers will have uh, a different uh, kayak for different styles of fishing. Yeah, uh, so the three second delay that you see me on the live video compared to what you're seeing on my monitor back there, uh, it, that's just something that I you get used to. Uh, there is a delay uh, with it, so just bear with that. Hobie Outbacks 2018 and 2017, let's see. Feel free lure 13 and a half. Yakin, which... Uh, we love your channel. Keep up the good work. Dior included with my morning routine, coffee and DLR. We are squid fishing here in Washington State. Tight lines. Ooh, wow. How cold is it up there? Um, I appreciate it. Thank you for the uh, support. I, w I wouldn't mind having a PA, but the PA... Uh, it just got cumbersome after a while. I, I absolutely loved that kayak and I used it for the better part of, I want to say like four years, uh, while I was stationed in Fort Worth, that was about three years. And then I was in New York for about three and a half years. And, uh, the pro angler, I mean, it served its purpose it is a beast of a kayak, super stable platform. And you never ever feel on edge that you're gonna flip out of it. It's because it's it's very stable. Um, the the what's keeping me from purchasing another pro angler is the fact that it's very heavy, it's bulky. Uh, you need a lot of storage space to uh, keep it into the inside the garage. You definitely need like for me because I have a small truck. I need the uh, bed extender for it and. It's not one of those 
hurry up, get up and go kayaks. Uh, the seat, I'm a, for the most part, I'm a smaller person. I'm 5'7", and the seat, my rear end, as I'm sitting on the seat, basically slides through the little uh, crack that's there between the seat back and the seat bottom. So uh, my body frame doesn't fit it quite well. And whenever the winter time comes and I start putting on my uh, bigger, bulkier uh, life vest, uh, the high back eh, does not work well with that seat. And with the Outback, their new CT Vantage uh, seat, that, that is awesome. Uh, it fits my body like perfectly. I prefer it. I'm able to stay out there for like eight hours at a time sometimes even longer. I've been known to fish in the summertime about 12 hours because if it's a like a hard grind and I need footage for uh, editing a video for y'all to see, then that's what I do. But uh, yeah, I don't see myself going back to a pro angler unless they are able to outfit it with that CT Vantage seat or make some type of modification. But it's a great seller for Hobie. Uh, I don't see them actually doing that anytime soon. What program do you use to edit videos? Uh, I use Final Cut Pro. Uh, I, I first started out with iMovie and I used that until I basically outgrew it. And uh, that's basically what I use now. It allows me to do a lot more. So uh, very grateful for uh, Final Cut Pro because going from iMovie to that, they're both by they're both Apple programs and it's like it's an easy transition from one to the other. And I'm still learning how to use that program. Uh, if I had a lot more time, if, so let's put it this way. If I were only doing one video a week, maybe two videos a week, the videos I would be able to concentrate uh, more towards editing the videos and, and do like better transitions and stuff like that. But because of the schedule that I maintain, that I have put on myself, um, I can't really go in depth because I'm constantly trying to hurry up and work on the next video. But Final Cut Pro, it, it's good. You should definitely check it out. Uh, so you prefer the 2018 Hobie instead? Uh, n so not necessarily, Rolando. Uh, what I, I prefer that 2019. It's hands down better than the 2018 and earlier model. Uh, kayaks um, with only one regard which is its offshore ability I've had better experiences with the 2018 model outback going offshore but I don't do it a lot uh, it's not my style there's too much water chop out there and that water chop hole slap and everything mixed with my camera gear and the fact that my camera gear is not um, what do you call it protected uh, it, it doesn't mix well, so it's not my style of fishing, but for my style of fishing, that 2019 is just hands down. It, it's way better than the uh, 18 and previous models for the Outback. What is a good marsh for someone new to marsh fishing to go to? Uh, well, it depends on where you're at. Uh, for the Houston area, I mean, I'll throw you all a bone. Pierce Marsh, if you can figure that one out, which is the like most well-known marsh in Galveston. All the others, you basically, uh, you gotta work at it. You gotta put in your time on the water, go find other areas, but look up Pierce Marsh. Uh, try to figure out how to fish that. It's got all the characteristics that every marsh has. And once you start applying the techniques of what to look for, what does blow-ups look like, uh, what is, you know, fleeing uh, grass shrimp look like and finger mullet. Uh, you get used to seeing certain types of bait out there during certain times of the year. And once you start putting the pattern together and knowing the hot spots of a marsh area, then you use Google Maps. And I'm only telling you from the experience uh, of what I did. I didn't go out and uh, basically, I didn't start 
asking anybody. I, I just like, hey, I'm a new student. Um, I'm going to go out there. Trial and error is going to be my style. And, and that's basically what I did. But once you figure it out, go to Google Maps. Use Google Maps to look at the marsh that you're practicing in and that you're learning the ropes in. And then start trying to find other areas along the coast that look similar to what you're what you have been fishing and then try to find an area as you zoom in where to launch from uh, because that's the most important thing uh, can I safely leave my vehicle at the launch and in me yeah pretty much I can because who's gonna want to take my truck uh, there's nothing in it that is you know worth anything but uh, the launch spot makes a big difference and then for some of these marsh systems, you have to be willing to do the paddle or pedal because they are far to get into that marsh system and uh, it's a good ways. So it just depends on uh, a whole multitude of things. Would going marsh fishing in a non-pedal drive be suicide? No, not at all. Take a look at Trail Chaser, uh, David. Uh, he's he's like one of the purists. Uh, he had an opportunity to take a PDL, a topwater PDL, the way I did, but he opted to go with Old Town's. Uh, I think it's like the topwater. It's the twelve foot topwater uh, series kayak, and that's a. a paddle kayak i think that's the question that you're asking me uh let me make sure that's what it is let's see would going in would going marsh fishing in a non-pedal drive yeah uh that is the question i understood it correctly um no uh if anything you're gonna have uh a, an advantage over pedal kayaks because you're paddling and then you're just going to basically draft right over every bit of structure whereas a pedal kayak unless you pull the drive uh, you cannot get into real skinny water so it's something that I've learned to live with and it works for me because I've already mastered uh, how to get through very skinny water and because I've been through some of those situations a lot uh, I know when to pull that drive and then when to start push pulling and leave the drive in uh, there's so many advantages and disadvantages with each style of fishing but uh, you once you get comfortable with it and you learn it it's pretty simple I got a 13 and a half uh, Titan propel pedal drive I love it I upgraded from paddle uh, like there it is uh, David awesome I mean it Whenever you get a kayak that you absolutely love, you're going to make that kayak work for you. One way or another, you're definitely going to make it work. So it's like if somebody tells me that I can't do something in my Hobie, uh, immediately I'm going to be like, no, I can do that. And then if I can't do it, <laughs> I'm not going to let someone say, I told you so. No, you basically learn to adapt and you overcome whatever it is that's hindering you from being able to accomplish, which for us, it's ultimately catching fish. So uh, I, I will adapt to every situation and I will learn how to make my uh, Outback work or now my uh, Topwater PDL work. So just because I'm gonna be going into marsh situations with the Topwater PDL, I know I can only draft in 12 inches of water. Uh, Otherwise, I have to pull the PDL drive when I go into very shallow water, but it's something that you will learn to overcome. So to tell someone, well, you can't do this and you can't do that, it's like, no, uh, you will figure out how to make it work. It's just how much do you want to work? Because some kayaks are less effort than others in certain situations. It goes back to the whole thing on uh, not one kayak is suited for all styles of fishing. How many videos do you try to put out a week? Uh, uh, I normally try to do three to four. I saw the answer right there, David. Thank you. Uh, 
yeah, if you notice, uh, the majority of the time, it's always a Monday video, a Wednesday video, and a Friday video. And then I'm going to aim to try and do a live video over the weekend just to answer questions and just have some face time with each and every one of you. What up, Sugar Land? Old Town Predator 13. You know, I, I was going to say something about the Top Water PDL, but then after thinking about it, uh, Old Town does provide, because I was like, you know, if the Top Water PDL was 12 foot long, uh, it would definitely track way better than a 10 footer. But it's like you have to understand where it is that each kayak, what part of the market it's trying to come in and it's trying to compete with because ultimately that's what all these kayak companies are doing. They're trying to compete with each other at different uh, price points and offer you different uh, features for the kayak that you're trying to seek out. And so like trying to compare my Topwater PDL to my Hobie Outback, it's not going to work. Old Town does make another kayak that will compete with that Outback. Uh, that's just not one of the ones that they gave me. So if I try to compare it to, you know, both of those kayaks to each other, it's, it's not going to work. It's like apples and oranges. But uh, most kayak companies do try to compete against each other for your business. And ultimately, that's, it's, it's better for each and every one of us anglers because uh, when they compete with each other, they try to lower the, like, the, the prices of their kayak because they want, ultimately, you to buy it. So, I mean, I think it's awesome that you have all these companies and the market is like so saturated with so many different kayaks, uh, it just basically helps us out. Thank you for the information. I'm an army veteran, new to saltwater fishing, but getting pulled by a 42 and a half inch bull red. Wow. Uh, it will get you, most definitely will get you hooked. Gosh, I could not imagine that. 42 and a half, I think that's like way bigger than my PB bull red. Uh, out there at High Island, and that's massive. 42 and a half inches, wow. 25 minute sleigh ride. Uh, that's pretty quick. What I would like to know what uh, rod and reel setup were you using and test pound? What's up, Ryan? How's it going? I look like George Lopez younger skinny. <laughs> That's a first. Uh, what's up, Brett? How's it going? Let's go back and see what else we got. What else did I miss? Uh, man, my phone's lasted for a while. We're already going for, what, an hour and seven minutes? Going towards an hour and eight minutes now. What would you recommend as far as the conditions for pier fishing? Uh, that I don't know. Uh, there are other YouTubers who concentrate on like pier fishing. Uh, one of them is a gentleman by the name of uh, his channel is uh, Beach Bomber, and he does a lot of pier fishing. I know that. Uh, it's not my cup of tea. Uh, I can go fishing on a pier, but like my, I, I guess my personal experience, uh, and where I excel is the kayak fishing and in more so in the marsh, not the open bays. I look to expand in the open bays because with it getting colder now, uh, I know that there are some big trout out there. Um, but fishing open water, that's, it's not my forte. And, uh, I've just got a lot more learning to do. A six foot six rod. Uh, you were using an old 5500C with 30 pound test, six foot rod. Okay. Uh, 5500, let me see. Did I miss anything? Nope. It hasn't worked right since. <laughs> oh gosh. So I'm gonna, uh, Garrett, I'm gonna assume that you're speaking about the. Uh, it not working right, uh, maybe the drag? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what a 5500C is. 
What do you think of Feel Free 11 and a half? Uh, I honestly don't... I, I don't have an opinion on it because I don't know enough about it. I'd have to actually physically look it up right now and then just basically tell you based off of looks what I think about it. But then, you know, uh, the look of a kayak is very deceiving. Something may look nice and stable, but then the minute you get it on the water, it can be completely different. So, I mean, yeah, I don't have an opinion on it right now. Can you go fishing one day with us? Uh, yeah, I mean, there. whenever we do the meetups, uh, I will try to do it, like give you the date a month in advance, and uh, we just pray for good weather, and we'll go out there. And, and like I said earlier in the stream, at the beginning of the live stream, uh, we'll do, or at least I know I will uh, do like a random drawing to go fishing with a subscriber wherever you're at or if you're in my area then you can hop in the outback if you don't have a kayak or the topwater pdl and we'll get both of those kayaks out there and then you can just come along fishing and we'll see about trying to do that uh, a little bit more just so that uh, y'all can get introduced to kayak fishing for those that don't own a kayak and then also uh, be able to pick my brain and if uh, more often than not Nick will be with me you can pick Nick's brain as well on some of the things that we see some of the things that we've concentrated on uh, what we're looking at uh, as far as uh, what to pay attention to the lures selection and everything but it's all it's basic fishing uh, you just uh, essentially you want to match the hatch you always concentrate on the bait what do you see there because whatever's there then that's more often than not what the fish are going to <coughs> are going to be feeding on and if you don't see bait well then you probably need to hightail it out of there oh a boo garcia 5500 okay Uh, I definitely would do a meetup in the Rockport and Aransas Pass area. Um, it, it's, again, it's like a whole logistical thing where if I'm going to do that, I need to make sure that I have a room for the night before so that I don't have to wake up at 1 in the morning over here, get over there early enough to start setting up and then uh, start fielding questions from everybody because th th there's like a, uh, a format on doing a meetup. Uh, you definitely want to try to get out there before all the viewers uh, show up so that they see you, they know where you're at, and you can keep an eye on the social media because that's their contact with me. And waking up at one in the morning is it's just eh, it, it sucks uh having to get up that early to get out there and then i don't end the day until later on in the uh, early evening hours and then a long drive back so i definitely need a room but i'm not opposed to doing it it's just it just hasn't worked out yet to be able to do that Pick Nick's brain for the best restaurant. Yeah, I'm telling you what, Nick has got a, a really good hookup with uh, some of these uh, restaurants, like the chefs and, and stuff like that. He knows some people in some high places, so uh, I'm hoping that uh, he will be able to continue doing those style videos. I find them very entertaining, and I know that for a fact my family, like when he does put one of those videos up, uh, we're all just completely entertained from the start to the very end of the video and it's like some of them are mouth-watering whenever you watch these actual chefs uh, the prep that they do in taking care of that fish from A all the way to Z is just like oh wow I, I would love to try some of the things that he's been able to try my brother asked if you were stationed at Pendleton or Lejeune I call it Lejeune. It doesn't sound like Lejeune. I never called it Lejeune with the changing of the name, but uh, no, never stationed there. I did, uh, what was it, uh, second phase out there at Pendleton. Uh, I was stationed across the way from Lejeune at New River, 
Uh, I grew up through the ranks of, uh, when I went through the ranks, I was a uh, GSC Marine as well, 900 division. That was my, uh, I was a 6072 back when they used to have that MOS. But uh, no, never stationed at either one of those uh, places. I was at Miramar, which is you know not too far away from Pendleton. Man, I'm telling you what. Okay, so Lazaro, we have big flounders here in North Carolina. Been uh, living here from Texas for two years, but still use same tackle and tactics as I did when you were in Sugar Land. I'm telling you what. Uh, I got a buddy of mine. Uh, some of y'all may know him, his YouTube channel, Elias V Fishing. Uh, he moved just recently, uh, well not recently, he's been there for a little while now in North Carolina. Uh, he's fishing the whole like Outer Banks area and man, the fish that Elias has been pulling in, monster bull reds. And it's like almost at will. Uh, the, the flounder that I see him pull in, I'm just like, Gosh, they're like doormats, what we would just love to catch. And then if you go further up north, which is where he was from and where I just came from, in uh, the salt water of like Jamaica Bay, uh, Raritan Bay, and some of the other places up there, when they go fluke fishing, because their fluke is, to me, it's a flounder, uh, just different coast, different name. Uh, the fluke that you catch over there are monstrous as well. It's not uncommon to catch like 20 inches and bigger. It's just, it's insane. I would love to go up there and fish that area too. Nine pounds, holy cow. Have I ever had to deal with a shark on a kayak? Uh, yeah, little ones. Nothing that really scared me. Like the craziest shark encounter that I had, which was like over in, I want to say seven seconds, uh, maybe not even that, was uh, my my oldest son and I were fishing by the Texas City Dyke, the floodgate. And I want to say it was probably like a baby bull shark stole our sheep's head and trout straight off of the stringer. Actually took my stringer too, but because I was a part of a fishing forum, that said, hey, watch out whenever you tie your stringers to your kayak. You want to make sure that if a shark gets crazy to come up and steal your fish, that uh, when it takes your fish, it'll just be able to pull the fish away from the kayak and it's not going to flip you. So what I did was put a four pound zip tie around my kayak and then I tied my stringer to that and the shark was basically four pounds of pressure, snapped it, and that was about it. But aside of that, maybe like the two and a half footer, three footer uh, little black tip sharks that we have out in the Gulf. When I fish the jetties every once in a while, you'll see them trying to circle around because they smell the fish that you have uh, tied to your kayak. So that's why I bought the Hobie uh, fish bag. Uh, and now I'm able to just basically deal with that uh, or not have to deal with the sharks anymore. Yeah, uh, so I, I take it, Lazaro, that you know who uh, Elias is. Most definitely beautiful. I'm going to assume that you're talking about how they prep the fish on Nick's videos. Uh, same thing, just different names. Yep, most definitely. Have you ever, with gar or dolphins? Uh, I have had issues with well, it's not really issues with gar, but it, if you put your fish on a stringer, uh, the gar definitely will come and investigate. To them, it's just an easy meal, and those guys are freaking nutty. Um, they don't care. They'll just come straight up to the kayak until you put something in between their eyesight and the fish, and then it'll spook them away. Dolphins, I, I like them to a certain extent. If I already have footage for a good fishing video, then I don't mind the dolphins. Um, it's whenever I've been grinding all day and then finally you come into a school of trout and uh, the dolphins, for some reason, I think they love speckled trout more so than like the reds. Um, because when we're catching trout, 
eventually the Dolphins, you're like, okay, something's not right. You know that the Dolphins are eventually going to encroach into your fishing spot and they're just going to pot lick off of you. And then sometimes the smart ones, whenever you catch a trout, the minute that you take it off the hook and release it, you'll see a huge wake. Just make a beeline for the, uh, the fish that you just released because you basically took the fight out of them and they have no chance getting away from the dolphins. But I mean, that was pretty cool to watch the first few times that I actually experienced it. But uh, yeah, I don't mind dolphins and gar. Tackle recommendations for the jetty fishing, spoons. Uh, any type of spoon, uh, try them all out. You cannot go wrong with a, a good spoon. Uh, they're easy to cast out there. You can launch it a mile. Depending on how heavy you want to go, uh, the spoon is king in my book. You will never catch me going to the jetty without some sort of spoons. What's up, H-Town P? How you like the Conquest thinking of getting my dad one for Christmas? That Conquest is a beast. Uh, I can definitively say that it is worth every penny. Um, I should do a review video again on it because I've owned it now for well over a year and they take a beating. All the tolerances are very tight still. The only thing that I changed on mine were the drag washers. One of them exploded. For those that have been with the channel for a long time, you know what I'm talking about. Shimano uses a graphite one. And for whatever reasons, I don't know why they use the graphite one, but just switch over to a, 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 the carbon fiber uh, because I have not had any issues with it. And the thing is still smooth as butter. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm fighting huge uh, upper slot and some over slot reds uh, with a little tiny 100 series bait casting uh, reel and those things can take a licking and it's all saltwater use primarily. So the fact that I have not had to change out any parts with the exception to the drag washer that reel is a beast. No clicking, no knocking, no grinding, uh, all saltwater use for the most part, and the reel just keeps taking it. And uh, it doesn't matter how big the fish are, uh, it has the stopping power to basically bring every fish uh, that I catch in. And I never worry about, oh, is the reel gonna fail me or is the reel gonna act up? casting into the wind, uh, everything. Bird's nest, uh, almost non-existent. Every once in a while, I'll goof up, but for the most part, that reel is very solid, and I can definitely say you get your money's worth whenever you break the bank to get one. If you had the money to spend on a kayak and it was not going to be a ho I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna assume you meant Hobie uh, what would it be so if I had the money to spend on another kayak uh, I would buy I already own uh, okay like hands down it's gonna be the Hobie uh, well you said not a Hobie right not going to be a Hobie okay so not a Hobie I was gonna say the tandem island uh, I definitely want that kayak for offshore stuff. But uh, if it wasn't a Hobie, I would say Old Town's, uh, their, what's the the Predator PDL? I want to see what that full-size bad boy can do because, man, I am very impressed with their Topwater PDL. That it's got me thinking, like, you know, what can you do inside a Predator PDL? It's a lot longer. It answers the questions of possibly tracking straighter with the rudder, plus you got the PDL drive. Uh, I love the fact that uh, Old Town gives you a lifetime warranty on the hull. It's like, wow, somebody finally gets it. It's just a piece of plastic. So if you wear a hole in it, you know, I'm not sure if they're going to warranty that, which is like, I don't know what the fine print is. But if they're going to warranty their kayak for like defects and everything, and they're not going to question you, um, they're going to give you a lifetime warranty for that hole. It's, it's spectacular to, to know that a company is going to be able to do that. 
plus their drive system, they're warranting that drive system for five years. That is crazy. Whereas the only thing that I know that Hobie does is like a year for their kayaks. And when you spend so much money on it, you know, you should have enough confidence in your product that you can warranty it for X amount of years. Like in my opinion, and, and this has always been my stance with kayaks, for the most part, every kayak out there on the market is plastic. So why are you charging $3,000 for a kayak? And this is another rant, and this is just something personal to me, but I am convicted enough to know that it's like we're caught between a rock and a hard place because if you want a great kayak, well, then you're going to have to spend the money on it. And that's what I've come to learn with the Hobie. I absolutely love that Outback. But, man, the research and development, it cannot be that enormous to where you're going to charge that much money for that product, you know, from here to eternity until you make a new kayak. Um it's just a piece of plastic. I mean, come on. How much does plastic cost whenever you wrap your head around that, that axle? It's like they're making out like bandits, but because we have no other alternative, and when new kayaks make it into the market and they come at a lower price point, well, then maybe that's what helps us to keep or helps us to be able to purchase the kayak at the price that we are purchasing it from. And the whole supply and demand and, and all of this come into effect, inflation and everything, and I'm not gonna get into all of that crap, but it's a piece of plastic. So going back to the question before I went off on a tangent, it would be the Predator PDL. That's what I would get. I'm very curious to know how that thing will compare to my Outback, because right now Outback is king in my world. Uh, I don't have any experience with any of the other kayaks because I'm just willing to spend my money on the Hobie. And uh, it hasn't given me any reason to basically steer away from it. So I'm kind of happy that Old Town reached out to me and gave me the opportunity to try out the Topwater PDL because it puts something else, you know, uh, within like grasp for me or not grasp for me, but... Uh, it puts something there that I never would have given a shot at uh, with my own money. But now that I know about it, it's like, hmm, now I'm very curious to possibly maybe spend my money on one of the, like the bigger brother and put that out there. I, I'm still looking for a kayak in my world to basically replace the Hobie. And until I find it, uh, the Hobie will still be my number one go-to choice. Any tips for a new channel, start it, and then uh, just keep up with it. Don't stop, don't quit. Uh, you're gonna hit rough patches. I know I'm about to go through one because as the winter sets in, everybody starts shifting over to hunting. All right, there goes my first warning uh, for the battery, uh, about to die on my phone. But, uh, you know, I'm gonna go through a rough patch. Just don't let rough patches stop you with your channel. Just keep filming. Keep producing content, uh, figure out what it is that you like to do. Don't copy someone else's style because why does someone want to uh, watch two channels that are exactly the same? I just say, be yourself, do what you love to do. If you find that you're not having fun, well then seek employment elsewhere. <laughs> what do I miss about fishing up here in the north? Uh, Gosh, I, there is quite a few things. Like right now, I know it's not quite ready for like ice fishing, but a lot of ice fishing uh, people, maybe further up north from uh, upstate New York, they're already getting ready for ice fishing. Uh, I definitely am going to miss the ice fishing. I, I have missed it last winter. Uh, there's something about it that was a lot of fun. Uh, I miss having the ultra clear water lakes. Uh, I, I don't miss the pickerel. Um, those guys are thieves. Uh, and because I use thin line, uh, they would easily make away with some of my expensive bass lures. But the ability to fish West Point, uh, being that they were private uh, lakes and only Department of Defense personnel could fish it, 
they were not heavily pressured, so catching huge largemouth bass is not uncommon up there. Uh, I miss the the cleanliness of it, the the beauty. I don't miss the restrictions where they were just like, oh gosh, so ungodly. Somebody down here in the South in Texas and other states, you would have an aneurysm uh, trying to get it to where you want to go kayak fishing on a reservoir or a certain lake. But in New York, they have all these restrictions where they're trying to prevent the transfer of uh, mussels and all this aquatic diseases and stuff like that. They don't want to pollute uh, or contaminate one clean reservoir with something that it, you know from another one. So uh, I th that was a nightmare uh, trying to figure out can you put your kayak on there or or not. Uh, the other thing is the land is all private. Uh, some of the reservoirs you can't access because of they're not being like a public launch. Um, but if you can get, uh, you know, you can find the reservoirs and the lakes that uh, allowed kayak fishing, that was awesome. Uh, I definitely miss that about the north. What carbon fiber do you use? I'm having the same problem with my K. Uh, I think it's called Carbon Tex. Um, look them up. It's, it's not a very like big site, it's, it's not the fanciest, but when you figure out which carbon tex washer uh, you can use for your reel, uh, definitely give it a shot. I have nothing bad to say about the ones that I purchased. Um, I used Andrew Martinez from Fishing Tackle Unlimited. Uh, he works in like the fishing uh, rod and reel repair and building. Uh, he told me which one I needed, so that's how I knew uh, the exact one that would work with my reel. But uh, Andrew, he's uh, definitely a great resource to uh, look for whenever you have a question. Do you prefer spinners or casting reels? Uh, I... I like them both. They each serve their purpose. They're in real windy days and you're trying to be finesse. There's no way that I'm going to be able to do finesse fishing with my conquests uh, when you're trying to cast like a 1 16th ounce lure into the wind. Can it be done? Yes. But are you going to get the distance? No. So you lose the ability of like surprise, the element of surprise. Uh, you have to get up close and personal to the fish in order to make the conquest work or bait caster work. But for the spinning reel, a little 500 series, it's not hard to cast a 1 16th ounce lure straight into the wind. So they both serve their purpose. But out of the two, I don't know. It's 50-50, uh, honestly, because a little 500 series reel is such a challenge to bring in a big fish on. But there are some makers out there, like manufacturers. Shimano is one of them. And... Uh, that little tiny spinning reel when you look at it it almost looks like a kid's uh like a child's play toy and when people see like the size of fish that you're bringing in and they're like what and you're catching it with that it's something that you i would basically say you could fish for bluegills and crappie and stuff like that freshwater panfish but yet you're bringing in huge reds so that's definitely really fun uh, for the spinning world but uh, yeah, both of them, like 50-50 for both styles of fishing. Where do you buy the bug lure? Uh, I think it imitates a shrimp. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, I don't buy the bugs anymore. It's because I have developed a relationship with Heath Hipple. He's the owner of Bugs Fishing. And Heath basically supplies me with lures. And whenever I have enough of them... Uh, I do giveaways, so yeah, that basically answers the question. I don't buy the bugs lures anymore. They're given to me, to, and when he gets new bugs or new patterns, like color patterns, he'll send them to me to take out there and try out, and uh, it's basically, that's the, what, what I've been, a, I've been lucky enough to, to form that relationship with him. And uh, now it helps to offset the price of my tackle because I don't have to purchase one of the, that, that lure that works so well. And uh, 
but where can you buy it? Uh, if you're in the Houston area, Fishing Tackle Unlimited sells them. Uh, I do know that when we uh, went to Corpus, uh, I found them at Roy's. Uh, that's a big store out there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can order them online as well. He has an online fishing store. What kind of battery do I run for the Topwater PDL? How many amp hour? I'm assuming you got the Helix 5 with it. I'm hauling a heavy 35 amp hour battery in the front hatch and it sucks. Lithium, question mark. Yes. So they didn't send me a battery with this. Um, however, my good friends, Eris at Mariner Sales, uh, I'm doing a battery test right now and that video is about to come out because I'm almost done with it. Uh, the last battery that I used to use was a 32 amp hour. I think it was the Intimidator battery, but that thing was god awful heavy. It served its purpose, but it was just way too heavy. I went down to a an 18 amp hour one, which it's still heavy. What's up, Nick? Um, that 18 amp hour uh, took up too much space. It weighed down the bow of my kayak because that's the only spot that it would fit. So I went to another battery. Uh, it's FPV Power. It's an Australian company, and this thing is a lithium-ion battery. It only weighs two pounds. And again, this video should be coming out within the next month because I'm almost done with it. Like maybe the next week, who knows? But this thing is only two pounds in weight. It's 17 and a half amp hours. And it's like a half amp hour less than what I'm currently using. But the thing is very tiny. So I'm going to try to order another pigtail so that I can put it on a topwater PDL. So yeah, thinking about that, I won't be able to use this right now until I get that pigtail. I'll order that from Mariner Sales immediately. Check it out. Uh, I recommend it. It's worth every penny because when you use a battery religiously, you know the kind of weight that you're dealing with. And only you will be able to know uh, if it's going to be worth your money or not. Uh, the first person that I know of that purchased that battery once they... Uh, actually took a look at mine that was Nick. Nick knows how heavy his battery pack was and when he held mine he was like oh my gosh that, that's amazing because it's amazing the power that you get from it and not only the power that you get from it for lithium-ion batteries everybody knows that that type of battery and water does not mix but this battery is waterproof. Uh, the circuitry that the circuit board that's inside the battery is all waterproof. The pigtails are waterproof. So if you were to ever flip your kayak and water hit it, it it's gonna work. It's 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 completely protected. So this FPV power battery is this like phenomenal in every way possible that you can think of, and it only weighs two pounds. When you compare that to something that's onwards of Heck, sealed lead acid batteries get very heavy, and it just depends on what style you're using. It could be easily be 10 pounds plus, and when you don't have to worry about uh, pedaling or paddling with that much weight on board weighing the kayak down, uh, it's awesome. Plus, the other uh, benefit is that this little tiny battery can fit directly below my center hatch, and uh, that's a big plus. Uh, because now I don't have anything in the bow of my kayak. I don't have to get up and reach over there if anything goes wrong. Uh, maybe wiggle a wire around because the wiring, the pigtail uh, gets corroded or whatever. I mean, uh, it's just all around an awesome and phenomenal battery. I can't recommend it enough. How much was my custom rod? Uh, the ones that I use are about $350. Uh, you can get them a little bit cheaper. It depends on the components that you want on your custom rods. Uh, because of how much I fish, I wanted something that can take the abuse, take a beating, and I use the basically the finest components that money could buy. Yeah, you spend, you break the bank once, you cry once, and then you enjoy it throughout the rest of its life. Uh, I used, I now use the, what do they call, their Fuji Torzite guides. 
and it's a titanium uh, metal with a Torzite ring. The Torzite is way harder than the Fuji SIC ring, which is like a silicone carbide, and then Torzite is just another type of material. It's thinner, lighter than the SIC, so it's like the top of the line Fuji guide that you can have. And then the cork, you just buy whatever cork that you want. Uh, and then Andrew does his magic and puts something uh, together that is just like a masterpiece, but uh, definitely worth every penny that I spent on it. <laughs> Finish watching Wreck It Ralph Breaks the Internet. All right, Lazaro, thanks for uh, tuning in. Appreciate it, brother. How do I feel about the Corrado K? I haven't fished with a Corrado in a long time. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll do a review. If the pay, if I throw the Corrado up for review, which by the way, to my patrons that are possibly watching, the Tatula uh, LT1000DXH, the, the oh, oh. All right, I got 10% power left, so we're about to end this, but uh, going back to, uh, and I'll get back to the Corrado K, but uh, what I was going with, or where I was going with the Co-Corrado K is maybe if the patrons select the Corrado K bait caster, I, I could possibly do a review on one, one of their newer models. I have the very first uh, Bantam Corrado that came out, and uh, it, it's a trooper. Uh, it's lasted for quite some time. But uh, going back to the uh, November uh, reel review, the Tatula, the Daiwa, this little 1000 series spinning reel, I didn't get to put it to much use. Uh, didn't catch any big fish on it. It's just because uh, the month of November was pretty horrible and I didn't uh, get out there and do much fishing. And then with my week long vacation, that was nine nine close to ten days of non-fishing use so uh, we're getting ready to do this giveaway on patreon so to the patrons i'm sorry i'm, I'm not going to have much information on this daiwa tatula i'm pretty sure it can handle its own i just i didn't get to put it through its paces but uh, we're getting ready to select a new reel for the month of december so go to patreon really soon and uh, i'll throw up like maybe one or two or two or three fishing reels to select from and it's going to be a bait caster so maybe that Corrado K will be on there who knows have you thought about the wilderness systems battery that's 12 volt 15 amp hour for 120 no and that's because it's uh now I don't have the personal experience with it but from what I have been told by a good source and is a very reliable source that I definitely trust, um, the FPV power battery is superior to it because of the circuitry that it runs and its uh, waterproof ability. It's just way better than the Wilderness Systems one. It is very pricey for that battery, but that battery was designed for what we do day in and day out. And it's a justifiable expense for me because it makes my life easier. It's convenient and uh, it, in every way, I don't have to worry about the battery anymore. It's, it's not like constantly in the forefront of my mind. Uh, everything about it is waterproof. So to me, that's justifiable. The expense, like again, that whole cry one time and then that's it you get to reap the benefit of everything that that battery does for you. How do I feel about pin rod and reels? I haven't really used them much. Uh, I'm kind of glad that I'm doing all of these like reel reviews uh, because I wouldn't otherwise try out different manufacturers of fishing reels and stuff like that. Plus it's just a way for me to give back to my patron community because they're the ones who allow me to to review some of these other pricier reels. And this little bad boy right here cost me, I think it was like 200, close to $230. But uh, some lucky patron is gonna be able to take this away here in a couple of days. Um, 
for the pin rod and reels. I know my brother uses them, but I don't really have much experience with them. I did the, the pin battle too. Uh, that was a 3000 series spinning reel. And from the get go, I mean, it was a good reel. Uh, it was a bit heavy for my liking, but uh, I really didn't have many bad things to say about it. I know a lot of you expressed the uh, that it, it doesn't hold up to like the years of abuse that redfish can do to it and saltwater fish, but uh, hey, uh, that's the only experience I have with them. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Hobie Compass? I think the Hobie Compass is a, it's a good kayak. Now, for what you get with the Hobie Compass, that comes in at the price point, I think like $2,000. I think that's what uh, Old Town was trying to compete with when they released the Topwater PDL because that's also a $2,000 kayak. I think the compass is a little bit longer, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's a little bit longer than 10 feet. Um, it's a good platform to start with and I will call that a starter kayak, uh, but Hobie, in order to get it at that price point, Hobie left off a lot of features that you get on most of the other Hobies um, at that price point. So the Topwater PDL, I'd say, competes with that Hobie Compass. And if it were me being a brand new fisherman to the market, I'm a Hobie guy, so I don't want y'all to take this the wrong way or think that I'm inside uh, Old Town's pockets, because I'm not. Um, by any means. I'm just simply stating the bang for your buck. Old Town with that Topwater PDL gives you so many fishing features with it for $2,000 that you don't get with Hobie's Compass. Um, you can certainly add to it, but if you want a fishing machine straight from the get-go stock, eesh, that Topwater PDL, it's pretty hard to to overlook and especially when you have to spend that hard-earned cash hey what's up Tim how's it going brother nice to see you uh, tune in I'm about to go offline though uh, the battery already gave me my 10 minute warning for battery or 10% juice warning the Daiwa ballistic instead of the Tatula uh, yeah I try to keep it reasonable. Um, not everybody I know can aff like afford to spend the money that they do with some of these reels. So I don't want to like spend too much of the money on very expensive equipment because not everybody gets to fish with that. And if I keep it anywhere from the $100 range to $200 range, I think that's like the juice spot. That's the majority of y'all can afford to go out there and purchase gear like this. But uh, there's all kinds of reels that, that are out there, and I just look forward to being able to do at least one of them uh, every month and hopefully put it through its paces and just tell y'all what I think about it, not a traditional uh, reel review in a sense where it's like I give you all the tech specs, all the geeked out stuff. Um, I'm just, just going to go out there, fish with it, and tell you what I like about it and uh, those five key factors that I talk about which is, uh, well, you'll see it inside the real review. Uh, I'm not too sure if I'm gonna do one on this because again, I didn't get to put it through the paces, but uh, I'll do future real reviews. Uh, catch and cook barbecue edition. Like, what do you mean? Give me an idea because I'm always looking for ideas. I've already got the next one in mind. If I catch a flatty, I'm gonna broil it. Uh, I've never broiled a fish before, but I, I think I am gonna do that with like some fresh veggies and stuff like that. Maybe some zucchini, uh, like a, a bed of zucchini or something like that. Put the flatty on top of it. I'm gonna marinate it inside uh, with some uh, Goya. And uh, yeah, I'm, my mouth is already watering just thinking about it. But yeah, give me an idea what you mean by like a barbecue addition, like use barbecue sauce uh, with the fish or what i mean just help me out throw me a bone and eventually maybe it'll make uh the highlight reel two hundred dollar budget open face 
What is an open face? I always hear everybody say it, and uh, is that a spinning reel? I mean, somebody help me out. Uh, what is an open face? I I only traditionally think of uh, fishing reels as either a bait caster. Now, at a bait casters, you have low profile, and then you have conventional, like the round reel, which is my Calcutta. And then I think of a spinning reel, and then you have like the Zebcos, which are like your spin cast. Those are the only three style of reels that I know, uh, besides like fly fishing. So open face, not too sure. I think somebody threw in a casting reel. Okay, so what open face? Bait, oh, heck, you just already told me. I should have read the whole question. Um, would you recommend $200 budget? I'm biased. Uh, I'm a Shimano person, and uh, I'm going to recommend at 200 bucks. If you get a Corrado on sale, I would say go with that, but I'm speaking of my previous use with a Corrado. Uh, it has never let me down. Um, person. So now thinking uh, of what I have just recently used, that is going to be the 13 fishing, the concept A. I fished with that, uh, 200 bucks. And the only uh, annoying thing that happened was a click. Whenever I'm cranking in, the spool would do like a clicking. It would basically rub against something, some part of the body, and then you would hear a noise. Uh, but it was a phenomenal reel. Lose, I tried. That's like really cheap though, so that's not two hundred dollars. I don't know. Uh, I gotta get. I gotta get more experience and use with other bait casters at that price point. Um, I just started doing reel reviews, so we'll see what my opinion will be later on. But right now, I don't know. I use the Calcuttas, and those are like five hundred bucks, very expensive. And then that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't have any other use with anything new and recent. Like grilled over an open flame, maybe smoked trout or tuna. Yeah, sounds pretty good. I thought about smoking, like using some hickory, maybe. I don't know what wood would actually smoke really well with uh, fish, but uh, I can definitely try that out. What is the battery you were talking about? Uh, it's FPV. Like F as in Foxtrot, P as in Papa, and then V as in Victor. FPV power. Uh, look them up. I'll leave a link. If I can remember all the links that I said I was going to do, because this thing has been going on. This live stream is forever. But as long as y'all are still watching, I'll keep talking until my battery dies. And if it does die, just know that, hey, uh, I thank y'all for watching. Because it's about to die like here really soon. But FPV power battery, it's from Australia, uh, 230 bucks, I believe. Mariner sells, sells them. They are a distributor here for uh, the U.S. market, and uh, it's a phenomenal battery. Check it out. Do a cook with VCS. Ah... Uh, yeah, we could probably try to make something like that happen. Pulled a 30 inch, 38 inch bull yesterday with a Luz Super Duty like it was nothing. I'm telling you what, uh, Luz does make some good reels. I tried out that Carbon Fire Speed Spool. I was very impressed with it too. Uh, why did you decide to retire? Uh, it was my time to do it. Uh, I couldn't go any higher. And uh, for those of you that are military geeks or military uh, yourselves, uh, prior military or still in the military, the Marine Corps has a component called the active reserve. That's the component that I was in. I was active duty for like four years and then I got out uh, for about two weeks and then joined the active reserve program. And then once you make it to E9, uh, you only get one tour. And my final tour happened to be in New York, and it was time for me to get out so that I would not stagnate the promotion system in, in my component. So uh, it, was, it was just time. Plus, I was ready. Uh, I had been without my family for close to seven years, uh, living apart from my wife and kids, and it was very tiring, stressful. And the amount of stress that I had 
on my shoulders uh, was just, it was ungodly. Um, and it was basically time for me to go. So, I mean, that's why I decided to retire. Oh, cool. That's awesome, Dennis. Uh, I really don't like to freeze my fish. I'm a weirdo like that. Uh, my family, they don't eat fish. I really don't eat fish as well, but now that I have been doing the cook videos and y'all seem to like them, um, I'm going to do it a lot more. And then fresh fish is just better in every way possible. I will never buy fish from a, a grocery store or a fish market. Uh, that nasty fish smell just means one thing that in order for you to smell that stench, the fish has to be decaying. It's already started its process of decaying. And when you catch fresh fish and you're filleting it, you don't smell that stench. So that's why I can get away with doing it inside my kitchen because I take great care of the fish. As soon as I pluck it from the water, it's going to go immediately on ice. It's going to be bled. And um, I don't know, fresh fish, you just got to try it. Uh, keep it as fresh as possible. Put it on ice. Do everything in your power to keep it uh, good. And trust me, whenever you cook it, it there is a big difference over store-bought stuff. And even some of the lower quality restaurants that don't take good care of the fish before they serve it, um, there is a definite uh, taste difference that you will be able to see. But if I can get away with not freezing fish, then... Uh, I, I've never, like, for all my videos, none of those fish have been frozen at all. Uh, it's always fresh. Oh, you know what? I think my video is about to stop because it's frozen up here. Um, I better hurry up and end this. I'll take, like, one more question, and then i got to be done with it. Parmesan crusted flounder is awesome. That sounds really good to me. Uh, let's see... Sheldon Reservoir, uh, I've done Sheldon Reservoir, I don't think Nick has. Don't try Ladyfish, uh, yeah. Anyhow, okay, so that's it. I I'm sorry that I couldn't get to all the questions, but I do thank each and every one of y'all. I've still got an audience of 50 of you out there, so I appreciate y'all for taking the time to just stop in, say hi. Um, be on the lookout for this video for the giveaway. Uh, it's the dry bag. And then there's going to be a lot more to come with this right here as soon as I get one of the pigtails to be able to connect this to my FPV power battery. Then the Topwater PDL will be going out there a lot more and uh, I'll be able to show you all what it's capable of doing in all types of situations. But uh, yeah, thank you all so much for tuning in. I really appreciate each and every one of you all. Until next time, everyone, tight lines.